Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you to the Church of the Air in the Gospel Barn. Amen. We've got a crowd of people here tonight, but I, I believe we've got a barrel sitting right here. I always want to tell about that. This barrel here, we got names, about half full of names of people that's put in there as people sick or something wrong with them, maybe sin sick. Amen. But anyway, they need the Lord there. Yeah. And if you want to send it, the address will be on the phone, be on the screen, or the phone number, and you call it in, and we'll put their names in there and lay your hands on it and pray for it. Amen. But God loves each and every one of you. Amen. Lord said, "Wasn't His will that any should perish, that all should come to repentance?" Amen. Oh, how God would love to see this nation repent and get back to old landmark. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves each and every one of you. So you need something from God. I should give up. You need something from God tonight. Just look to Him. Amen. Wherever you are, at your home, amen, your work, amen. No matter where you're at, you're watching this program, you just look to Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that we're going to stand face to face with one of these days. Amen. Hallelujah. A fellow told me all the time looking at, at the faults in other people and all. Amen. They're telling me about the other people there. I told him, I said, look at me. He said, why? I said, look at me. He said, why? I said, look at me. He said, I'm looking at you. I said, when you stand before God, them people ain't going to be there you point a finger at and say, Dale, what kind of life they live and all. I said, you're going to have to answer for yourself. Get yourself right. Amen. And answer for yourself. That's, that's what we're all going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Praise the Lord as we praise your holy name. God, we thank you, Lord, for the saving grace of God. Lord, we thank you for your love, your kindness, and mercy, Lord. Thank you for Calvary, God. And we ask you to reach down, God. God, each request, Lord, those people that's looking to you, Lord, God, to touch them, Lord. And this young man, Lord, tonight, God, he brings some message, God. You said your word would not go out and come back void. God, thy word, God, anoint his lips of clay, Lord. God, anoint thy word. Thy word is truth, God. And, God, we ask you to bless each and every one, Lord. Strengthen us, God, within you, Lord. And we give the praise, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus tonight, Lord. I give you, give up, give up, give up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to invite Brother Caleb Thomas, Thomas, I believe it is, here to speak for us tonight, Brother Gates. Amen. Amen. First of all, I just want to say it's an honor to be here tonight with y'all. Uh, I'm, I was glad when I got the call, but I ain't here for me. If you came to hear somebody, you came to hear a man, you came to the wrong place. I came to hear for Jesus. I came here to hear from Jesus. I came here to talk about Jesus. I came here so that you will see Jesus. My goal is not that you see me. My goal isn't that you know my name when I leave. My goal isn't that you remember what I said. But my goal is that when you leave, you know a man that I call my Lord. And his name is Jesus. I'm not in this for the income. I'm in this for the outcome. Amen. I don't, I don't look what I can get. I don't look what I can have. I look at what you can have. I look at what God gave me and I can give to you. God didn't, call, God didn't save us so that we sit where we are. God saved us and then he told us, hey, go and make disciples of all nations. Go ye therefore teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And here's the best part. He says, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. And you know, you better start, we better start getting out there because that end is coming very soon. Amen. And where he may be with you, it's sad for me to say that he's not with other people. I mean, there's still people out there that need Jesus. And as long as there's still people that need Jesus, I want to be the one on the front line telling these people about Jesus. Amen? Tonight, I want to talk to you just for a brief minute. I want to talk to you about a man named Abraham. Amen? Can I talk to you for a minute about a man named Abraham? If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. And the story I'm going to be reading from is a very famous story. 
All right, you heard it as a kid growing up. You hear it nowadays. All right, but in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 22, and it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. I want to point out something. Abraham didn't, when God spoke to Abraham, the first things out of his lips were, Here I am. He didn't try to hide from God. He knew who was talking to him. And he said, God, I'm here. Take me now. Anything that you would have me do, take me. I'll do it, Lord. Just call upon me. You have called upon me, and I, here I am. I'm here to do your will. I'm here to do your work. Amen. And then in verse 2 it says, He said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. I want to point out something there too. Isaac had a son before, I mean, Abraham had a son before he had Isaac. So when the Lord came to Abraham, he said, Take now thy son, thine only son. Why do you think that if Abraham already had a son, he said, Take your only son? Let me tell you something. Isaac was the only son that God uh, promised Abraham. Isaac was the promise of God. So when Abraham took things into his own hands and he sinned against God, God did not look at the sin that Abraham had as his promise. God only looked at Isaac. Because that was the true promise of God. How many of you know when you put things in your own hands, when you do things of yourself, you always seem to mess it up? I mean, I remember time and time again, I can look back on my life where if I would have just fell on my knees and said, God, I can't do this no more. I need you to do it for me. But instead, I tried to take things into my own hands. I tried to do it of my own self. And that's exactly what Abraham did here. He tried to take it upon his own. Instead of trusting God, he took it upon himself to give the promise of God. He said, Now take thy, thou thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. And the Bible says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Now I want to point out something. Abraham did not question God. The Bible doesn't say that Abraham said, well, God, why? The Bible doesn't say that Abraham looked up in the sky and cried to try and change God's mind. God, Abraham heard the Lord speak. He heard the directions of the Lord. And instead of trying to do things of himself, he obeyed God. It says that the next morning, he saddled his ass and took two of his son, young men with him. And Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Amen. The Bible doesn't say that Abraham stood in question of God's judgment. The Bible doesn't say that Abraham questioned God. The Bible said that Abraham heard what the Lord had said. And the Bible says to Abraham that next morning he immediately took everything he, would, he prepared for what he had to do. You know, we, we, try, we try to spend more time trying to change God's mind more than we try to prepare for what God told us to do. We'd rather change His mind than to do what He told us to do. We'd rather, instead of preparing for what God has said and told us to do, we would rather try to get out of it. We put more work trying to get out of work. We put in more work trying to get out of work than we do work. Abraham didn't question God's judgment. Abraham didn't question him. He immediately, that next morning, he immediately took everything he needed and he prepared for what God had told him to do. You know, so many times in my life, and I'm not speaking for you, I'm speaking for me. So many times in my life, I see where God has told me to do something and if I would have prepared, I would have succeeded. Amen? Amen. In my life, I've seen if I would have prepared, I would have succeeded. But instead of trying to prepare, and instead of trying to trust God, I tried to take things upon myself. And I tried to talk God out of what He had told me to do. And guess what? That time I spent trying to prepare, in the end it led to failure. I mistook the time God gave me, and it led to failure. And then I, 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 I counter people all the time. And they say, you know, I just don't understand. 
I just don't understand why my life just seems like one big failure, one big mess up. I don't understand why I don't succeed. And you know, when I came across this scripture and I started reading it, I realized in my life why I didn't succeed. Because I didn't take the time to prepare. Amen. A soldier doesn't go to battle in his casual clothes and a knife. No. When a soldier knows he's going to battle, he puts on the armor. He grabs his weapon that is suitable for the fight. And he moves out in unison with the others around him. A true soldier prepares for the battle which is to come. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm a part of this army. I'm a part of that army. I'm a part of that army of the Lord. And instead of trying to question God, I just soon prepare for the battle that will come. But it says that he took everything. He prepared. And he saddled his ass. And he got two young men. And he took the sacrifice, which was Isaac. And he headed off to where God told him to go. Mm. And it says, Abraham rose up early in the morning. I've already read that. It says, then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Now, I want to make a point. How many of you know when you got to do something and it takes a while to do it, you're anxious about it? I mean, your mind, your mind torments you about what you have to do. And Abraham had to wait three days walking and just thinking about what he had to do when he got to that mountain. You can imagine what, what was going through Abraham's mind. The torment that he was going through. What he was going through was, I'm going to have to kill my only son whom I love. It's going to be terrible. This is going to be terrible. I'm taking my only son, and he doesn't even know that he's about to die. He said he lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. It says, when he got there, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. Can I ask you something? What would happen when Abraham came back down that mountain with no Isaac? What would happen? He told, he told the young men to stay there. What would happen when Abraham came back down that mountain with no Isaac? Well, what was he going to tell the young men? I had to sacrifice him to God. What was he going to tell them? There was nothing he could tell them. He'd have to tell them the truth. And where would that lead him? They, they would either put him to death, put him to jail... They would do something with him. So you got to imagine that Abraham is not just facing that he's going to have to sacrifice his son. He's facing jail time or he's facing death himself. But he says, I want you to stay here. And me and the lad, we're going to go up there on that mountain. We're going to take this, these wood and we're going to burn it. And we're going to worship the Lord. And it says, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. So he said he gave Isaac the wood, he took the fire and he took the knife and he was walking up this mountain. They were going up together. Mm. Now listen. Verse 7 says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his son, And said, My father. And he said, Here am I, son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? So Isaac gets to questioning his dad. He says, I see the fire. I see the wood that's going to keep the fire going. But where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? What are you going to put on this wood? What are you going to put on this fire that the Lord's going to smell? We can worship it. What are you going to do? Where's the sacrifice? Now listen to what Abraham responds with. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Now that may not mean nothing to you right now. But what I'm fixing to tell you, I remember, or I don't remember, but the Bible tells that in this time that they had to sacrifice things to get forgiven of their sin, right? Now listen to what I'm saying. 
They had to sacrifice themselves and pray to God. They had to make a sacrifice and then pray to God that he would forgive them of their sins. And there was no, they would have to do that daily or weekly or monthly. Whenever God told them to do it or they felt like they, need, they would have to do that. Now, this is really going to put emphasis on what Abraham says. There was no Jesus. Jesus had not died yet. Jesus had not died yet, but what Abraham said is God will provide himself a lamb. That is what Jesus was. That was the lamb that God provided to us. That was the lamb that forgave us of all of our sin. He was the ultimate sacrifice. And God did exactly what Abraham said he would do. He provided himself a lamb. Which was his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And he said, so they went up, both of them together. And they, gained, and they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there. And laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son. And laid him on the altar. Upon the wood. So they get up to the top of the mountain. They get up there. And Abraham has set up this altar. He set up the wood. And he's, getting, and he's bound Isaac, his son. So now Isaac knows that his father, what his father's fixing to do. And the Bible says that Abraham took his son and laid him upon this altar. And, it said, and the Bible says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Now listen to this. And it says, The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. You can see where Abraham was so quick to answer God in everything that he said. In everything that God asked, whenever God called, Abraham was right there. He was right there looking up saying, Here am I. Let me tell you something. God is not looking for a person that he can see and that will just...